Good morning and uh, welcome to the Rise at First United Methodist Church. It is so good to see all of you that are worshiping with us this day here. And though I can't see you, a special greeting to those that are worshiping with us uh, via online. Uh, you know, take a moment now and quickly send a text to somebody else and say, join us in worship this morning. Just go online, do a watch party, whatever that stuff is, and, uh, and have, a, have an hour of just praise uh, and worship and gratitude to God. So thank you all for being here today. We are so glad you're here. Just a few things going on in the life of our church. We continue with our school program, which is Kingswood. It's a discipleship ministry for kindergarten through fifth graders. Um, we also are continuing to have Sunday school and Bible studies throughout the week, all of which you can find out about using our phone app. It's free. It's F-U-M-C-M-H-C. Uh, download it, allow notifications, and get involved. Now, yesterday, y'all had a pretty big event in the district. We did. We took our youth yesterday to an event called Sun Salt Sea, which is a district youth gathering. There were about 75 youth from across our little county, um, four or five county area. So we will not have regular youth group this Sunday. So no youth group tonight. We look forward to seeing you guys back next week. All right, so again, keep up with the church, all the activities on the website or via the app, and let's prepare our hearts now for the worship of Almighty God. Let's rise and sing. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still mercy. Oh, we 
grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough. Every Amen. You guys can be seated. Our first scripture reading comes from the prophet Isaiah chapter 59. The Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice. He saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So his own arm achieved salvation for him, and his own righteousness sustained him. He put on righteousness as his breastplate, and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance, and wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak. According to what they have done, so he will repay wrath to his enemies, and retribution to his foes. He will repay the islands their due. From the west, people will fear the name of the Lord, and from the rising of the sun, they will revere his glory. For he will come like a pent-up flood that the breath of the Lord drives along. The Redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who repent of their sin, declares the Lord. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. It is our faith that unites us, those who are worshiping here and also those who are worshiping with us online and Christians who worship this day all around the world. Friends, let's stand together and proclaim the faith that unites us in our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, you may be seated. One of the most important things that we can do for each other as a community of faith is to pray with each other. Are there any joys this morning that you would lift up with the body of Christ? Um, happy birthday to Bodhi. That's a huge joy. Six years old. So cool. Are there other ways we can celebrate with you? Yeah, Raven. Woo! We rejoice. New life for Carly and Raven Bolster. Man, we're just so happy for y'all. We're also celebrating the sacrament of baptism with a family at the 11 o'clock service. So we pray for the Gray family and give God thanks and praise for all he is doing in their life. Um, are there needs that you would lift up to your brothers and sisters this morning? Luann Outlaw, we certainly, and Tom to Mimi, we're praying for y'all and David. Um, the loss of a mother is hard. We did the service for Louise Outlaw this past week. Sandra Norris, if you're watching online, we're also praying for you too. Um, Powell, yeah. 
Yes, for Tony Luther's grandmother and father, and Tony and Michael as well, and Haley and Jake, who have all um, tested positive, and, and Tony's dad is in the hospital, and her grandma as well. So definitely continue to pray for them and for all who have been impacted by this pandemic. Yeah, Pat. Hmm. Pat, thank you for sharing that with us. We're praying for your whole family. Um, thank you for lifting that up. Yeah, right here. You said the Waters family? Definitely. Thank you for sharing that, John. Other prayers, friends? Yeah, Waylon. Darlene, we're praying for your friend Judy. Thanks for sharing that with us online. And friends who are watching online and worshiping together with us this morning, you can give us those prayer requests anytime during the week. Y'all who are here too, um, we take those seriously. So if you send us a message anytime during the week, we will stop and lift those persons and needs up in prayer. Let's go together before God in prayer this morning. Sarah, can I add one? Yeah. I just want to um, remember Katie. And her family yes. and the loss of her father. Thank you, Liz. Katie, we are praying for you and with the loss of your father and for Katie, your whole family. Um, thanks for sharing that, Liz. Let's go together before God in prayer. Gracious God, you laugh with us and celebrate with us, but you also mourn with us and grieve with us and cry with us. You've heard the needs that we have lifted before you this morning for those that we named out loud and those that we named in our hearts. Continue to work in these situations. Sustain all of us with your loving grace and your holy presence in each and every moment of our lives. Lord, you do cover us with the full armor of God. Let these moments of worship be the time that strengthens us so that we might go out from here and be your hands and your feet, both in the situations that we've named God, but also in all of the places that you call us to go. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, as we uh, have our special time with children, those kids that are present with us, stay with your families, those that are worshiping with us online, uh, feel free to gather around the screen as we share a special moment together. So, um, guys, you know what this is, don't you? What is it, Tucker? It's a fireman's hat. There's a guy in our church, his name is Assistant Chief Bailey, and, and he wears this now, why does he wear this, kids? Why would Assistant Chief Bailey wear this hat? It's not very light. In fact, boy, that would wear you down after a while. And I don't think it's easy to see through because that's not true. Why would he wear it? We wear this kind of hat. Why, Tucker? It's a helmet. Thank you. To protect his head. From the fire and the smoke. This is about protection. It also, because it's got the name on it and the, the, his title, it also helps us to know who he belongs to when he's wearing it. And so today we're going to talk about how we wear a helmet that does the same sort of things, kids. It lets us know and the world know who we belong to, but it also protects us from 
all that might do us harm. And I believe that we should put this on every single day. Now, can you imagine actually having to wear this every day? So it's not this kind of helmet, but it is the helmet of God's salvation. And so I want you to listen up today and remember that we also are protected by God as we go through the great challenges of our life and, uh, and fires and other dangers. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for covering us with your love and grace and power and protection. Help us every day to, to put on the helmet so that we can be your children and be safe in our days. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. We have another joy this morning, and that is um, a, a couple that has been a part of our family but is now choosing to come and to uh, unite with us formally in membership. And so I invite the Honeycuts, Parker and Scott, to come forward at this time. And as we do, we'll invite them to respond to the questions of faith. And it's an opportunity for all of us to renew our faith as well. And so on behalf of the church, we ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? And do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? And do you receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments? And according to the grace given you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? And will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? And as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Friends um, everywhere, we invite you to join together in the welcome that is printed uh, on the screen. We give, we give thanks, thanks for, all for all that God, God has, has already, already given, given you, and we, we welcome, welcome you in, in Christian, Christian love. love. As, as members together with you, you in the body, body of Christ, of Christ. And, and in, in this, this congregation, congregation of the United, United Methodist, Methodist Church, we, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church through our prayers, our presence, our, presence, our gifts, our service, and our, and our witness, that, that in everything, everything God, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Christ. Let's welcome this new family in our congregation. <laughs> We're so happy to have you all. Thank you. Bless you all. Yes. Please. Bless you, brother. Friends, we do come to a time in our service where we remember that it's a part of our worship life together to give back to God, God's tithes and our offerings. We still continue to not pass the baskets around person to person, but there are so many ways you can give right now, even in this worship service. You can pull out your phone and find that app, um, click give either in the app or on the church website. We do encourage all of you to continue to be generous. We've seen so many beautiful gifts and graces of generosity and abundance, particularly through our Kingswood program. And we did mention it last week, but I do want to say again, thank you to Chick-fil-A for providing lunch both days. Um, what a, a beautiful gift and blessing for all of our volunteers and kids. Let's now offer up to God the fullness of who we are, our hearts and our minds, um, as we continue to worship. You are not hidden There's never been a moment You were forgotten You are not hopeless Though you have been broken Your innocence stolen I hear you whisper
sing Amazing Grace.
you have heard this text for several weeks. Still got one more. But today I want you to hear it in a different light, and that's in the light of the first text that you heard read this morning from the 59th chapter of the prophet Isaiah. Uh, You might want to take some time to read that whole chapter, but in those verses we learn about God as the divine warrior, and that the armor is God's. So even as we're talking and today reading about this whole armor, here especially today, of God. It's God's armor. Ephesians 6 verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. So that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. So that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. With the breastplate of righteousness in place. And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all of the Lord's people. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, cover us by your grace, by your love, by your power, by your truth. Cover us with Jesus. Amen. Hats. Some people are hat people. You know, there once was a time, some of you are too young to even believe this, when all adult women wore hats to church. In fact, some in our sanctuary still do, especially on Easter. You'll see a, a wide variety of beautiful Easter hats. My, my dad liked hats. His father before him was a hat guy. He would wear those, those fancy wool hats. Even as a farmer, he would tuck that wool hat on when he went out to plow. And so my dad just sort of likes hats. And, and he'll wear any, any kind of hat, different kind of hats. He'll have those fancier, dressier hats. Uh, he bought a, a, a really nice travel hat when he and mom took a, a, a trip to Australia and, and Dad even likes those, uh, or did like, those uh, Scottish beret type, you know, hats. A, a tam? A tam. Thank you, Harrison. A tam. I'm not a hat guy. Sorry. I mean, the only times I really wear a hat is either at the beach or uh, when, it is, when I'm playing golf. Hats are a covering. And they cover for a variety of reasons. It might be because it's your dress style. It might be to cover a bald spot. It it might be a show of respect for an occasion. Uh, A hat is often a covering as a part of a uniform, which is a sign of office or authority. And sometimes it's for protection, as if from pouring rain or burning sun. So that brings us to a particular kind of hat, 
helmets. Helmets have a primary purpose, and that is as a tool for protection. Uh, A baseball or softball player wears a helmet in the batter's box to protect themselves from an errant or an injurious pitch. A a firefighter, like Chief Dykeman, wears a a, a hat, a helmet, to protect themselves from, from dangerous falling debris. A soldier wears a helmet to protect their life. A helmet for protection against injury to save your life. Well, the Apostle Paul sees our life, our life as disciples seeking to follow Jesus, as a life that needs protection. You see, there there is some deadly falling debris and some fiery arrows flying. There is a conflict taking place where one party wants to destroy the other, to take their life away, our life away, both present and eternal. You know, in, in today's world, especially today, it seems we can get all caught up in the circumstances of our day. Disease, politics, culture. So caught up that we forget that there is a greater conflict going on. That the powers and the authorities and the evil powers of the spiritual realm are at war with us. And part of their strategy is to keep us from even thinking about them until it's too late. Or to to get us only thinking about the present day, which, as important as that is, is just a blink of an eye in the scope of eternity. Paul says here, put on the whole armor of God and you will need each and every part of God's armor in order to stand firm. Today, put on the helmet of salvation. So the the Roman soldier's helmet, you've seen pictures, even in the little brochure we passed out. It started out as just like a skull cap. It was made of iron and then covered in bronze. And then later on in time, it it got more fancy, more protective. They added a a neck flare and then cheek guards. The, the, The helmet for the soldier was to protect them from the swing of the broad sword, which was a fierce weapon that had the very real possibility of separating their head from their shoulders. And so the helmet was a a critical and a comprehensive piece of coverage for that most vulnerable area, the head, because one blow there could end it all. So our helmet for the disciple of Jesus is the helmet of salvation. So that's the point. Salvation covers us. Salvation guards our life. But then there's that question. And many today don't know this or ask it, but hear no answer. What is salvation? Salvation is being restored to a right relationship with God. Now, restored which means that our current state is not in right order. We too often are living in rebellion, choosing our way over God's way. And the consequence of that is that things are deformed and and we are separated from God. So salvation is the restoring of that original relationship that God accomplishes on behalf of of us and all creation through Jesus Christ. It is an act of God's mercy and grace. 
And that right relationship into which we are restored implies that we from that day forward will live in a right relationship with God in the right way. With God being the only God. And with us being faithful children. Choosing to live our lives under His authority and power. And that truth has implications not just for eternity but also for in the way we live in the right here and now. We sang a a, a great old hymn, Amazing Grace, um, with the Chris Chris Tomlin uh, twist. But there's another great old hymn. Maybe some of you will know it, Rock of Ages, Clef for Me. Well, there's this this one stanza in there that, that says, Be of sin the double cure, saved from wrath, and make us pure. See, the rock of ages is Jesus, and cleft for me means that that he has divided. It's a place of safety through his life for us, and that because of that, his sacrifice, he has covered for for us both the penalty of sin, God's wrath, And also freed us from the power of sin to live today. That is a double cure. So that rock's been cleft for us and we're hidden with him. So the good news is that when we go into battle for God, which is essentially for us living each and every day for God in a world that desires to live for itself, We are fighting a battle that God has already won. God has already conquered sin and death. God has already given us our freedom. And God has made us citizens of heaven. And so we live here as His. And so we continue to stand firm in faith and thanksgiving. So the helmet of salvation is the assurance of us belonging to the God who has already won the victory for us and for all creation. Assurance. When Mary Lynn and I were newly married, she she worked for a, a short period in registration at the Sheraton Hotel in Durham. One day, this really large gentleman stepped up to register. His name was Rosie Greer. Now, those of you worshiping with us, Google that really quickly. Right now, just Google it and send Waylon uh, what you find. But how many of you, I know Sarah wasn't even born yet. How many of you know the name Rosie Greer? Thank you, three of you. Well, Rosie Greer was a professional football player. He played for the New York Giants and the Los Angeles Rams. He was, he was part of what they called the fearsome foursome. Um, it, it was tough, all pro. Um, and, and when he retired, he, he began to do a, a number of things. One was to be a bodyguard. And so he was a bodyguard for Ethel Kennedy and was present when, when uh, Senator Kennedy was shot. In fact, Rosie Greer helped to subdue, subdue Sirhan Sirhan. Um, so, some of you may also think, that's interesting, we, we think of Rosie Greer and Needlepoint. Again, Google that and you'll see. Well, Rosie Greer was this, this, this awesome figure, but he spoke very freely of his Christian faith. And Mary Lynn remembers a very pointed question that he asked her. He said, young lady, if you die today, are you sure you'd go to heaven? Well, in humility, Mary Lynn replied, well, I, I certainly hope so. To which he insisted, no. You have to know so. You have to be sure. Because it's based on God's promise. 
assurance. Our confidence, our assurance, it's not rooted on our faith. It's not rooted on our abilities to to never sin again, to always be faithful. Our assurance and confidence is founded on the promise of God secured in the atoning gift of Jesus. In the 10th chapter of John, Jesus says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and I follow and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. Do you hear that promise? Now, now sure, it leaves open that you can abandon God. But you cannot be snatched out of God's hand. And 1 John 4, 4 says, Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. The helmet of salvation covers our heads. It it covers our thoughts. So, So if we think we're defeated, we're defeated. But if we think we're secure in Christ, then we are secure. Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 says, Since or because you've been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For your life is hidden in Christ through God. In in modern therapeutic practices, there's something called self-affirmations. It it means, rather than tearing yourself down, speak positively to yourself. Well, Well, in our faith, we might rather say, speak the truth of Christ to yourself. Refuse to repeat the lies of the evil one. So rather than worthless, speak chosen and beloved of Christ. Rather than can't, speak all things are possible in Christ. Rather than defeated, speak Romans 8. Who shall separate us from the love of God in Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither life nor death nor angels nor demons nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The helmet of salvation, the assurance that we are covered in the grace of Jesus. Not to be taken for granted, but to strengthen us to stand firm as his people in this world and in the next. That's the promise and the power of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, you cover us by your salvation. Sometimes we resist it. Sometimes we deny it. Free us to believe. Give us faith to trust. Help us to put on the helmet of salvation and be covered so that we might stand. Amen. Sacrifice, he 
this blessing. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sustaining fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you this day and forevermore. Amen.